Chapter 7, Seven Additional Tips and Tricks to Stay Disciplined. In the last chapter of the book, we'll discuss some additional tips and tricks that will help you stay disciplined. The ideas presented below will increase your chances of forming a new habit and changing your default actions. When you combine them with all the things you've learned so far, you'll become much more successful at saying no to temptations. Make yourself accountable and set stakes. My friend, who's a successful entrepreneur, writes his close friend checks to hold him accountable. If he doesn't accomplish the goal he shared with his friend, his friend can cash the check and use the money as he wishes. Setting stakes is one of the most powerful ways to keep yourself disciplined. After all, if there's no punishment if you give in, except for self-guilt, it's more tempting to succumb to a craving than if you knew you were going to suffer grave consequences. For the best results, stakes should be high. If you're going to give your friend a check, it has to be for a substantial amount of money, not a small sum you don't care about. Instead of giving your friend a check, you can use stickk.com. It's a website that allows you to commit to a specific goal. Then you can set stakes if you don't reach it or appoint someone, the referee, who will keep you accountable. The site offers four options for setting stakes. You can either choose a friend or a foe who will get your money if you fail at your goal. You can also choose a charity or an anti-charity, an organization you don't support. Stakes are a powerful motivator. Let's say you will penalize yourself $50 every time you eat a chocolate bar. For how long would you keep eating chocolate if it essentially cost you 50 bucks? Is any chocolate bar even worth this kind of money? And what if you not only lost $50, but it would also go to an organization you hate? A special kind of setting stakes is buying a gym membership for a year up front, or paying up front for anything else that will help you achieve your long-term goal. Sometimes all you need to stick to your resolutions is the perspective of losing a considerable amount of money. Make sure to achieve small wins. Studies show that people who lose the most weight in the initial weeks of their diet lose more weight in the long term, even if they follow an extreme diet. Other studies discovered that among middle-aged obese women, those who lost weight most rapidly were the most likely to keep it off after one and a half years. It sounds like it goes against the best practices of losing weight. After all, it's the tortoise who should win, right? Yet science says otherwise. When you think about it in the context of self-discipline, the reason why it works this way is simple. People who lose the most weight in the first two to three weeks of dieting are encouraged by their initial success to keep going. The string of small wins helps them stick to their resolution even when the effect of initial rapid weight loss wears off. You can apply these findings into every area of your life that needs more discipline. Want to save enough money to cover your living costs for three months? Set a goal to reach $100 in savings first, then $250, then $500. Want to lose weight and change your eating habits? Consider a diet that brings quick results in the short term but can be maintained for a long period of time. Want to stop worrying so much? Set a goal to stop worrying for just one day, then try two days in a row, then three, or try to stop worrying about just one specific thing in your life, then two, then three. The first small wins will encourage you to keep going and boost your motivation to make permanent changes in your life. Put roadblocks. We cave in to temptations because of an impulse. One second we see a chocolate bar, the next second it's in our mouth. We see a discounted item we don't need, and then we find ourselves paying for it at the cash register. If you're an impulsive person, put roadblocks that will serve the role of your self-discipline. For instance, if you have a habit of buying discounted things just because they're discounted, don't carry a credit card with you. Replace it with a small amount of cash. If you always go to your favorite fast food restaurant after work, 
set up a meeting right after your job so you can't repeat your behavior. If you want to stop mindlessly surfing the internet while working, turn off your Wi-Fi card or use an application that will block access to the internet or the sites that distract you. Make choices before they become emotional. Prevention is the best medicine, and so is planning for your temptations. If you're always hungry at 3 p.m., pack a healthy lunch instead of grabbing your spare cash and getting a chocolate bar from a vending machine. If you want to stop arguing with other people and know a person who always drives you crazy, come up with a plan to avoid this person. When you plan for situations that can challenge your self-discipline too much, you reduce the risk of giving in to a temptation. Consequently, you prevent cravings instead of fighting against them. Schedule Indulgences Tim Ferriss is the author of the wildly popular fitness book, The 4-Hour Body. In the book, he describes the slow-carb diet, a diet that focuses on eating foods with a low glycemic index. Entire groups of food are restricted, but it isn't what makes the diet easy to stick to and so effective. This diet, with the addition of some extreme modifications, helped me lose over 30 pounds in 12 weeks. What makes it so powerful is the cheat day, a scheduled day on which you're allowed to eat anything you want, as much as you want. Tim Ferriss has no delusions. People give in to cravings, especially when they're dieting, and there's little he can do about it. Consequently, he decided to allow the dieters to indulge themselves one day a week. In addition to making people stick to the diet better, a cheat day actually helps you lose weight instead of slowing down your progress. Just like it's easier to work for 25 minutes if you know there's a five-minute break coming soon, so is dieting more bearable when you know that in six days you'll be allowed to stuff yourself with whatever you want. You can adopt the idea of a cheat day to your other habits too. For instance, if you want to exercise more, schedule one day per week that you can spend at home with zero physical activity. You don't necessarily have to follow through, but it will be a powerful boost to know that you can. If you want to start a new business and work on it every single day before and after work, set one day per week that is free of any kind of work. No matter what your habit is, you can find a way to give yourself a short break that won't ruin your progress. In most cases, the result will be the total opposite. You will be more motivated to keep going. Tie habits together. As we already explored in the first chapter, habits will help you automate your behaviors and introduce changes in your life without exerting huge amounts of self-control. What I didn't mention in the first chapter, though, is the idea that you can combine your existing habits with new good ones. For instance, if you always brush your teeth right after you wake up, associate the act of brushing your teeth with a short meditation session afterward. Once you establish a new pattern, brushing your teeth will remind you of the meditation. When you establish the habit of meditating after brushing your teeth, you can add another good habit on top of these two habits, say, writing down three things you're grateful for. Stacking habits on top of the existing ones is easier than coming up with completely new cues and routines and will help you form habits with more ease. Just get it going. Best-selling author Jack Canfield once said, you don't have to get it perfect, you just have to get it going. When you feel overwhelmed and ready to give up, tell yourself you'll try something for just five minutes and then you can stop. When you start and five minutes pass, more often than not, you'll want to keep going. What's hard is starting, not continuing once you get it going. For instance, if you introduce a habit to exercise for 30 minutes three times per week, tell yourself you'll put on your running shoes and go for a quick five-minute jog around the block. If you can't force yourself to go to the gym, tell yourself you will only perform one exercise and then you can go home. If you have a hard time meditating, tell yourself you'll only meditate for one minute. Make the act of starting as painless as possible, 
once you overcome the initial resistance, you should find it much easier to keep going. Let's recap seven additional tips and tricks to stay disciplined. Making yourself accountable and setting stakes are two powerful ways to get external motivation to stick to your goals. Come up with a punishment for breaking your resolutions and you'll think twice before giving up. Small wins will encourage you to keep going during the first, usually hardest part of forming a habit or making any other changes in your life. Make sure your process is small win friendly by setting many goals that can be achieved with relative ease. Instead of testing your self-discipline, put roadblocks and make choices before you're forced to react to an impulse. Think when your self-control is going to be tested and prepare for it, either by making the threat disappear altogether, avoiding a specific situation, or to make it easier to bear. Reward yourself with days of indulgence from time to time. All of us give in to temptations on occasion. Instead of making yourself feel guilty about an occasional slip-up, plan when you're going to do it and enjoy it. Associate new habits with the existing ones to make it easier to introduce a new routine in your life. Avoid procrastination by telling yourself you'll only perform a certain task for five minutes. Chances are that once you start, you'll want to keep going. Epilogue Everyone can introduce more self-discipline in his or her life. I hope that what you've just read will help you introduce new changes in your life and stick to your resolutions even when faced with temptations. The most important thing to remember from this book is that self-discipline relies heavily on your motivation and habits. If you have a powerful reason for all of your initial struggling, you'll want to keep going even when life will test you with temptations around every corner. Set goals that fire you up but aren't impossible to reach. Beware the false hope syndrome. Form good habits and use the tips and tricks mentioned throughout this book to say no to instant gratification and reach your long-term goals. Positive, permanent changes in your life are more than worth it.